just like any other vegetable, you learn it. Just practice. So how do you know which one? You want to know which one's edible, which one's not? You know? It's just familiarity. It's just like, look at these people, you know? How many of these people can you trust and which one can't you? What do you want me to tell you? Trust the white people, don't trust the black people, right? It's like, it's, it's a generalization. So I can't tell you all the white mushrooms are edible, or vice versa. It's a little more complicated, but it's not impossible, okay? It just takes practice without even thinking about it. I am gonna go through these and I'll tell, okay, I'll talk about how you can see the differences. And we'll get to specifics, but the general thing's important, in case you get bored and leave. You only have to remember one word. You ready? It has three letters. You want to be a forager? I'm going to yell so they, they can hear me. Okay? You want to be a forager, and you want to, and you want to eat, eat these things more than once, you just have to know one word with three letters. What do you do when you're not sure whether you can eat this or not? Don't has four letters. Run. Eat, it's not eat. Run. It's not, it's not run. It's something in between eat and run. It's not try. Ask. You ask. A S K. Why did you do it? Ask a person. Hey, D I Y is D U M. You know, you go to Europe and you could ask your parents. You could, you could go in the cab. Has anyone been to Europe and, and no mushroom hunting there? It's crazy. It's like the national pastime, like football here. You get in a cab and you ask, what's the score on the game? You get in a cab there. In Poland, you're like, what mushrooms are out? They'll tell you. You know? It's a culture. So that's why I'm trying to teach kids, recreate a culture where we actually are food, food self-reliant. Do you know they call this Asheville Foodtopia? Have you heard that? That's like the pitch. Well, I was in a meeting, a board meeting yesterday, at the PR for Asheville. I was like, Foodtopia, do you know we're the third worst city in the country for hunger? We have the most, biggest hunger problem, third worst in the country, around Asheville. And you know what, at the same time, it's the number one wild foods capital, not just of the country, the entire world outside of the tropics. There's more diversity, more biodiversity, it's called more richness of wild things to eat here than anywhere else north of the tropics or south. And we have a hunger problem. I think I could pick all this in, you know, 10 minutes on any day. Tomorrow, if you want to come at 10, I can take you to a place where if you go to my website, you'll see a table. You cannot see the table. It is so full of mushrooms. Teaching one year ago today, uh, pretty much today, where we're going tomorrow at 10. You can come to the class. You see. But it varies. You know, some years it rains, some years it doesn't. It's a good year. It's been having a lot of rain. That's what makes it fun. So how do you tell? We're gonna do more of that. How did I get into this? Right, so I, I, want, I didn't want a job. It's free, it's free food. So I was unemployed, I, 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 I had plenty of time to learn this. And uh, then I realized I could make a living telling, teaching other people. And I've sold to restaurants, like I said. But in the beginning, I, um, I was like back to the land hippie. I wanted to get out of the system. A lot of the things I realize now, I don't think I knew that this is the healthiest food. I mean, I had a fair idea, I think, then. But now I realize it's not that wild food is good for you. It's that anything else is bad for you. Do you know why? Huh? Not because it's processed. That makes it even worse. Even if it's organic, local, fresh food, why is it not as good as this? Most of it's not fresh, but what if it's, even if I picked it out of the ground and gave it to you? It's the carrot. Why would a wild carrot be a hundred times better for you than a cultivated carrot? I have one. I don't think I brought it up. Because the land hasn't been part of it. That's part of it. We definitely depleted the land with agriculture. You know what the number one worst thing humans have ever done to the planet is? not, huh? Hybridization. That's part of it. It's agriculture. It's clearing land for agriculture and then polluting it with fertilizers and stuff. But even if you grow organic, 
organic isn't sustainable because you're growing stuff that isn't meant to grow there. I was just over there at the uh, truffle booth and they were like, so you're interested in growing truffles? I said, hell no. I don't have to grow anything. I get it wild. And what I get is natural. So if you grow an organic garden, 90% of what you're trying to grow isn't natural here. That's why the weeds take over if you don't do anything. So how about you do this? Let the weeds take over. Eat the weeds. Because they're a hundred times better for you. Because that's what we evolved to eat. There's a book just came out. It was reported on in the New York Times. It's called Eating on the Wild Side. It talks about over 10,000 years how we've taken something like a wild carrot and tremendous amounts, you know, of vitamins and made something that's big and sweet and colorful but has no nutrients, right? So we make things that, you know, are, you know, sugary like corn, but corn doesn't exist in nature. It's going to be a little crunchy thing, but it's going to be that little thing of more nutrition than a giant corn. Because you're not eating the big ball of cotton candy, you know, basically is what it is. So that's why, unconsciously, I think I had an idea that natural food was better for you. And I had no idea that wild is really the only natural food. Now you can grow these things. I'm not saying you have to forage for it. But grow something that isn't hybridized, that isn't bred. Okay, so instead of spinach, you grow nettles. Nettles is 125 things that it's good for, documented by the USDA. You can grow reishi, this mushroom here, 160 things this is good for. It's not always this big, but I picked 80 pounds of it. Rough size is about this big, this year. That's about four years worth. You can pick it for free. I have a class. The entire class in May is on this one mushroom. It's how important it is. How good for you. It's a mushroom. It's a mushroom. It comes on a tree like that. It's called the mushroom of immortality in China. Do you know what it's called here? White butt rot. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you. I think I'm making this up. I asked someone, you got any reishi here? And they I don't know. Oh, white butt rot. Oh yeah, we got that. We hate it. We put the pest pesticides on it. Let's see here. Um, oh shucks, come on, the name's not in this. But anyway, there's the picture. He calls it varnish cut. You can see why. Varnish. Alright, so this stuff is good. It's not just food, it's medicine. Because it's that nutritious for you. This can reverse cancer. Right? Two out of three of you sitting here, if you're a man, get, are going to get cancer. That's the statistic. One out of three women is getting cancer. What's the number one cure? This. Go, go pick up a bottle in the store. It's going to say, Ganoderma lucidum. That's this. You don't have to spend $50 for a bottle. Pick up a bottle in the store. It might say PSK or Tramites versicolor. Where is it? That's this. You ever seen this in the woods? Incredibly common. Turkey tails. Right? You can make a brooch out of it, you make an earring. I think that's where the medicine is. It's in how beautiful it is. It's not even when you eat it. It's in the relationship when you go out and pick it yourself. That's part of being natural too. I'll pass that around. And here's... Yeah. Uh, you know, where do you go hunting? Are you trespassing? And the answer is, no, you ask. I had a guy, I knocked, I asked, can I pick your mushrooms? And he said one word to me. He goes, dig. And I walked away because I didn't want to like, you know, press my luck. He was obviously telling me it was okay. Do you know what he meant when he said that? I think he was telling me, take them by the roots because I want them gone. People, they always say yes. <clears throat> I had a guy, he had 50 mushrooms in the front yard, I asked him, he said, the backyard had 150. <laughs> yeah. People don't know. This is reishi. This was growing on some, they took me to their house. I did a talk like this, I said, oh yeah, we've got that one at our house. We came there, the mushroom had died away, 
No, wait, wait, wait. It wasn't this one. It was a different mushroom. Yeah, it was something like these. A soft one that doesn't last more than three days. We came and it was gone. But I passed a stump and I saw this on it. I said, what about that? They said, oh yeah, we've been trying to kill that for six years. They ended up chopping the tree down because it hollows the tree out. They couldn't kill the mushroom. It's still coming back. They invited me in for tea. The house reeked of mothballs. Do you know what mothballs are? Paradichlorobenzene. Benzene is what's in gasoline. You want to get cancer? You can do two things. You can drink gasoline or you can powder mothballs and eat that. These people were giving themselves cancer and they were trying to kill the one thing that would have cured them from what they were killing themselves with in the house. This is like the country we live in. This is why, the, you know what the number three cause of death in the U.S. is? The medical system. It's called iatrogenic causes. And this is how backwards we have stuff. Um, all right, what else? That's what you had to pay for the class to find. I'm kidding. All right, let's have a tour. Yes. It's just very close to Peachtree Street in the city. Yeah. And we have all oh, these huge trees, huge trees. Yeah. And we always have these big fat mushrooms at the bottom of the trees. And we always kick them out of the way. Alright, so she she thinks mushrooms are better kicked than picked. She got a she got a mushroom like I did on the tree, like she said, she kicks them. She just at least she doesn't put poison on them. But the kicking doesn't work either. We got bad news for you. <laughs> the bad news is the tree's probably going to fall down. It might crush your house. If you want to see pictures of that, I have it on my website. I was picking chicken in the woods. You think this is big? I picked one 15 times, no, 20 times this big. Chicken of the woods. Where's my book? I sold, guess how much money I got for one mushroom. This is like Price is Right. If you go over, eh, so. <laughs> I did make a thousand dollars on the mushroom. I only made seven hundred and fifty dollars on one mushroom. Okay. Right, so you don't have to eat them. Yeah. You like money? Because it's, it's edible. Yes, edible and choice. We got it upstairs at the booth. So Selling. What, what about my mushroom, though? How 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 would I what know? What do you want to do? Get rid of it? Well, how would I know if I can saute it? Yeah. Look here. You send me a photo. Okay. All right. Ask. One I'm word, S. 